welcome to The Leslie Show. I had the craziest day today. Oh my gosh, I scared myself. I, I wear fake eyelashes, right? And so I was eating my shredded wheat and all of a sudden I screamed. I was like, oh my God, I screamed. I told my husband there's a spider in my, <laughs> in my cereal and he comes out. Because that's one of your eyelashes. I told you not to be wearing those fake things. Oh, I felt like such an idiot. <laughs> anyway, we have a really great show today. We are going to have Anya Kaufman from the Area Agency on aging here today, and she's a clinical social worker, a licensed clinical social worker, and she's going to tell, tell you all about what it's like to have aging parents and all the different benefits that are out there today. So stay tuned. Well, hi, Anya. Good to meet you. It's great to meet you. So can you start out by telling us about yourself and exactly what you do and where you're from? Well, I would be happy to. My name is Anya Kaufman and I am a licensed clinical social worker and I am also the program manager for the Senior Connection Program, which is the hidden gem of the Area Agency on Aging here for Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo County. Let me explain a little bit about what that is. Okay. We are the information and referral branch of the Area Agency on Aging. So we are here to answer calls and walk in clients who come in to see us who have any and all manner of questions about how do we get older successfully? How do we access resources in the community? How do we get to what we need to make sure that life runs as smooth as possible? And we answer those questions to the best of our ability, get people linked with resources in the community, as often as possible free resources, which is really important, and I have found it's a, an older adult's favorite word, free. And that's what we are here to do. And our services themselves are always free and confidential. Okay, and you've been around, is it since the 1970s, is that right? The Area uh, Agency on Aging for San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara County was uh, made a, an incorporated nonprofit mm -hmm. in the 1970s. Uh, it was originally for the three county area and it included Ventura County, but in the 80s we broke off and uh, made ourselves a little bit smaller and slightly more manageable for the two county area and we have been chugging away ever since then. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I wish I knew about the agency because I took care of my parents for 15 years, mm. and I really learned the hard way, and then I found out about your organization, and then I saw this great book you have here, and boy, it's, it's very helpful. So let's start out with a few questions. Maybe you can tell our audience about respite care. What, what do you have for that? Okay. okay. Well, let's explain what respite care is first of all. Okay. Respite care is a built-in uh, time away or a break for somebody who is serving much as you did and I have and lots of our viewers out there have as a family caregiver, whether mm -hmm. it be for somebody who has a developmental disability or is aging or has a terminal diagnosis or a chronic condition and they need, in order for their own health and well-being, to have a break and some time away. Respite care is a challenge to come by in this county, I can say that much. Uh, there are some good options out there though. One of the options in order to get some respite is to attend an adult day healthcare program, which are now referred to, to confuse things a little bit more, as community-based adult services, known as CBAS. Okay. There is a wonderful adult day healthcare program right in the city of Santa Maria called the Wisdom Center. Oh. They are getting ready to open a new building, which we're very excited about and have been waiting for for some time. There's also Valley Haven in Lompoc, which is a terrific adult day health care program. And older adults and people with disabilities go to these programs usually from approximately 9 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon. They have lunch there. They usually have breakfast and a snack. And the whole day is filled with really wonderful and developmentally appropriate activities for them. Could be pet therapy, music therapy, oh. exercise. Bingo is very popular. Oh, wow. Uh, and oh. depending on the program, there may also be a physical therapist and a physical therapy program involved. Uh, there could be speech therapy uh, and a nurse on staff as well. So you can know that your loved one is in a safe and monitored environment. So that could be a piece of the respite care. 
There is also respite care where there is a complete break and somebody has some time away entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some small grant programs that can be available to assist with that. Again, the funds can be hard to come by. And one of the greatest programs out there to support respite care for that is the Coast Caregiver Resource Center. They are connected with Cottage Hospital in Santa Barbara, but they have counselors and care managers that can make home visits to assess families and loved ones who have a dementing illness and link them up with what they need, including hopefully some respite time. And you're saying this is free of charge? It is absolutely free of charge. All um, the services from Coast Caregiver Resource Center are free of charge. The adult day health cares do charge, but they have some funding sources. If you have somebody who is on Medi-Cal, or for the Central Coast we call it CENCAL, you can have some funding through that source. And also the Veterans Administration helps to pay for an adult day program. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. wonderful. Good resources. It is. Um, do they pick up the, the person as well? Is there a bus that comes to your house to pick them up? Very and take often you there? with the adult health care programs, they have their own transportation. I can say that the Wisdom Center does have its own transportation. Uh, if they don't have their own, they usually have an arrangement made with some of the senior transportation in town, like the Smooth Bus. Oh. Have you seen those buses I've seen driving the around smooth, town? Yes. And that's, isn't that like a dollar to drive? It's, it's very affordable. It's mm -hmm. under $3, mm -hmm. and caregivers can also ride as well. And it is door-to-door -door transportation for older adults. And uh, it's, now that we're on transportation, mm -hmm. let's also mention SMAT, which is the Santa Maria Area Transit. This is run by the bus company itself, and it is their paratransit solution. So this is for people who need to, uh, who wouldn't otherwise be able to ride the regular bus and need to run on the regular bus lines. And okay. you do need doctor certification for that, but it is a terrific alternative as well. And they start picking up as early as 5.30 in the morning. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, um, do they still have partners available? I know that was a group where they would pick up the patient and take them to the doctor's office, take them wherever they wanted to go, shopping. You are talking about a great organization called Community Partners in Caring. Yes, Community Partners, that's right, yes. Are they still around? Community Partners in Caring is alive and well okay. and doing terrific. They have a location here in Santa Maria and they have offices in Lompoc and they focus on three main things at this time. One of them, you're exactly right, is volunteer transportation. The other is friendly visiting. One of the big issues that we have with some of our older adults is social isolation. Mm. So they do friendly visits completely free of charge to make sure that somebody isn't alone and isolated and lonely and battling depression. And they also, to bridge off of that, do their third piece, which is a reassurance call. Oh. So they can be that person, that warm, friendly voice over the phone just to check in, whether it's on a daily basis or a weekly basis, mm -hmm. to make sure that somebody's got somebody who's looking in after them and cares. Mm -hmm. Do these organizations need volunteers? Very yeah. often they do need volunteers, and I'm glad that you're bringing that up. Most of these terrific helping organizations function on volunteers only. In fact, at the Area Agency on Aging, we have very few full-time volunteer, full-time staff people that are there. In my program, there is one full-time staff person, that's me, and everybody else that is there plying our trade and answering questions are volunteers. Okay. So yes, if people are looking for things to do and ways to give back to the community, your intellect, your wisdom, your caring, we need that. And we would love to have volunteers either come be with Senior Connection or uh, to another program that you might be an excellent fit for. And they're welcome to call us and see if we can match them up with the program. Great. We'll make sure we put that telephone number up on the screen so people mm -hmm. can call. Absolutely. Um, what about if someone needs repairs? Generally speaking, one of the, one of the spouses is, is technically inclined and the other one isn't. What if you're not technically inclined? Are there people that can come out and your toilet breaks or your sink breaks? That kind of thing we get calls for all the time. 
You know, we were just chatting at our volunteer staff meeting this afternoon about the fact that when you get older, your social life starts to consist of funerals and memorials. Yeah. <laughs> People start passing away, and maybe that person who was the handyman in your family isn't around anymore, or they have aged and they're not capable of doing what they did before. Also, every senior I talk to reminds me that they are on a fixed income. Right. And they don't have extra money at their disposal. So having it done affordably or at low to no cost is critically important. There are a couple of wonderful programs. One is Habitat for Humanity, and they're right here in Santa Maria. And they do have a low income home repair program for folks who qualify. And they can help with any manner of minor home repairs. Oh, that's. From recocking windows to helping replace a door to putting up a grab bar. Uh, and in San Luis Obispo County, which we also cover, mm -hmm. there is the Community Action Partnership of San Luis Obispo. It goes by CAP Slow for short. Okay. And they have a minor home repair program as well. So you have to be under a certain income to qualify they for They usually have income requirements. Okay. But they're welcome to call and we can chat about it. Okay, good. Yeah. And then what about assisted living? Do you have assisted living um, places as well that... How does that work? Oh, now? absolutely, absolutely. We get calls with questions about housing and different kinds of housing and what's available all day long. We had a lady come in today who was wearing a fabulous kitty cat sweatshirt and she wanted to know about housing for herself. And through conversation, we identified that it really wasn't independent housing and it wasn't low income housing. It was assisted living that she was looking for. Mm -hmm. And that can come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. There are large assisted living facilities in the community. Merrill Gardens would be an example of that here mm -hmm. in Santa Maria. And there are small assisted living communities, and we call those board and care homes. They are usually licensed to hold no more than six residents at a time. Mm -hmm. So they have a very good low staff to resident ratio. It's usually one staff person for two residents. Mm -hmm. And it has a very home-like setting. If they don't have a sign out front, you wouldn't even know it was a care home. They're right in community neighborhoods. And we have lists of every single assisted living facility that is in the county area, divided up by city. Okay. And we have that available for any of our consumers if they're interested, for themselves, for a loved one. And we make those lists available for both San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara County. Well, how would the person know if it's a good assisted li living place versus one that maybe isn't as good? Because I've heard that some of them are really great and I'm some aren't. Ah, okay. That's a great question. Well, first of all, you want to make sure it meets your particular needs. So on our list, we denote whether or not they accept pets, uh, if they have transportation available, if they are available for those respite stays only, if they'll take somebody for a short-term stay, if they're licensed for dementia. So you find out that way if it meets some of your needs. And if there are additional questions as to whether or not they've had any citations or things along those lines from their licensing bodies, mm -hmm. then we always refer them to the long-term care ombudsman for their county. And that is the agency that's responsible for overseeing and making sure everything is as it should be for residents in assisted living and skilled nursing facilities. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the meals, what if somebody lives in a, in a mobile home park or they, wherever they live and they just need someone to come out and help them with their meals? Is, are there people that do this? There absolutely are. There are several uh, avenues you can go for help with your meals. Either you can have a, a private caregiver come out and help to cook those meals, or you can have home delivered meals. Oh, oh, is that Meals on Wheels? Meals on okay, Wheels, yeah. that's right. And there are great Meals on Wheels programs for uh, the Santa Maria Valley, for the Lompoc area, for Santa Barbara and Carpinteria. Depending on where you live, there are different uh, agencies that cover those areas, and we can get you linked with the right one for you. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, I have also wondered about the paperwork. Because just like mm. the repairs, sometimes one of the spouses in charge of the checkbook does all the, the legalities, and then the, the spouse is left not knowing anything. Is there a person that can come out and help them with some of the bills or you know, some of the financial paperwork? That is an excellent question. Um, 
and it depends on the situation. I think this is one of those uh, instances where it is helpful that there is a licensed clinical social worker who is the program manager for Senior Connection because I've, I have the ability to sort of tease out uh, some of the nuances of what it is they might need and what might be the best fit for them. It could be that the best fit for them is a private fiduciary to take over and manage their bill paying. Uh, it could be that they are just stumbling a little bit with a certain item mm -hmm. that they need some help with. Mm -hmm. And this is where, if they're living in the local area, I will sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and I will help them fill out that form. Oh my goodness. And I will make co photocopies for them and I will fax things for them and I will be their personal assistant for, the, for that moment, for that afternoon. Um, it, depending on what the paperwork issue is, it could even be a matter of somebody needing paperwork sorted out so they can make sense of it. I had a client call yesterday who said, I have a diagnosis that causes me to shake terribly and I keep dropping all of my paperwork. I can do the calculations for my taxes, but I want the social security papers here and I want my prescription papers here and I want this here and this here. Do you have somebody who does document sorting? And oh. I have a resource for that. Oh, you do? I do indeed. So is it a private business? Or? It is a private business called um, Sorting Through a Lifetime. Oh. And I can refer people to her, and she is absolutely wonderful. And she goes out to the house and helps them? She goes out to the house and helps them. She does have a parameter of what her travel area is, so I always ask what city people live in. But it's resources like this that we know of, and we can get people linked up with what they need. Because I know a lot of widows that have never had to do any paperwork, mm -hmm. and then at the end they... They're completely lost. And I it's thought, terrifying well, so, and overwhelming. Yeah. Terrifying and overwhelming. And then tax time comes. Oh, what a nightmare and that And then would tax be. time comes. So I, I'll tell you, it's starting in January, our phone at Senior Connection is going to be ringing off the hook asking where are the free tax preparation sites oh. that AARP runs. Oh. And we should have that list uh, probably mid-February, and we'll be able to let people know where and when they can go for their free tax preparation help all throughout San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara County. And, well, what age would you be considered a senior citizen? For our purposes, it's 60. Oh, 60? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I've always wondered what... What a, some people say 55, 65, so 60 this would be. Yeah, and if, you, if AARP is involved, they get you when you're 50, so I, have, oh, I better look out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, you brought a lot of paperwork with you today. Maybe you could tell our uh, audience some of the other services that you I have. I did, absolutely, Leslie. We have been referring quite a bit to this book and uh, this book, if you don't have your hands on it yet, we'd be happy to make sure you get it. All you have to do is give us a call, and we are at 805-928-2552. This is our senior resource directory. This is one of the primary programs of the Area Agency on Aging is putting together a directory for each county. This is Santa Barbara County. We do it every two years, and this is our latest edition for San Luis Obispo County. So this one has just come oh. out and it's fresh and it's got all okay. new wonderful okay. information in it. And we've got everything in here from emergency information all the way to veteran services. And if there's something you can't find in here, like the assisted living list or a list of elder law attorneys or somebody who can help with bill paying, then that's when you give us a call Senior Connection can be found right on the inside back cover where it says questions. We have answers. That's us. And to let you know, once again, all of our services are free and confidential. That's very important for older adults and their family members to know that their information is not going to go anywhere. It's never going to be sold to anybody. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be handed off to anybody. Mm -hmm. We do do an intake form so we know who's coming in and who's asking the questions, but that kept, gets kept in a locked drawer and then shredded. Oh, that's good. Yes. Okay. Do you have support groups, too, at your agency? There aren't support groups that we run, but we do host uh, a number of community events at the Area Agency on Aging, which is at 528 South Broadway in Santa Maria. One of the uh, groups that we have there is a general caregiver support group. Oh. So it is not specific 
to a dementing uh, illness or uh, somebody who has had a stroke or had cancer. It is a general caregiver support group open for anybody who is dealing with family caregiving issues. Uh, and it is uh, meeting the second and fourth Tuesday of every month from 3.30 to 4.30. And it is run by the social worker who is in charge of the Santa Maria Wisdom Center, the adult oh, day health care. Okay. So she has an extensive amount of experience in dealing with people who have a variety of health conditions and their family members. Her name is Cynthia Navarro. I think I might know her. Did she work at the Park and Recreation Department as well? Uh, not, I don't think she did. Okay, <laughs> I, I, somehow I thought I recognized that name. But it's, it's good to be informed because you can save yourself so much stress. Yes, you if can. If you know that you can delegate some of this out to other people. Absolutely, absolutely. I had a call today from a lovely, lovely uh, client out in the community who um, is actually in Oceano because we do cover San Luis Obispo County. Mm -hmm. and. She said, I just need help getting things done, and I have such a long list. And so we went through her list together over the phone. Mm -hmm. And she uh, was asking for everything from physician referrals to the number for Quicken Loan, because she doesn't have access to a computer, mm -hmm. um, to uh, help with Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with a whole list of homework, as I call it. Oh, I bet. And that makes me happy when I have homework for somebody to do. So she's going to get a lovely packet in the mail with some physician referrals for what she was looking for, for the number for Meals on Wheels. I gave her the quick and loan number already over the phone. She'll get our resource guide, and she'll know where to call in the future. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Well, the world has become so technical. The, you know, starting as babies now, they can already start operating these phones and computers. So people, when they get 60 and above, they're a little bit lost when it comes to technology. Do, are there people they can call to teach them how to work a smartphone, you to teach just, them how to work the computer? You just hit on another piece of that phone call that I had with that same client. She said, I can't figure out how to work this new phone that came with no instruction manual. And I said, that's because they want you to go on the computer and download it. Uh, how do I do that? That's scary to an older person. How do person? I do that? So yeah. I had somebody put it to me so simply it made sense. We are either technological natives or technological immigrants. I like that terminology. I that really, sounds better. I like it too. <laughs> and I'm a technological immigrant. I was not born with a smartphone in my hand. I wasn't either. <laughs> <laughs> so you either have to find a handy toddler who can program your phone for you, yeah. or yes, you do need to find somebody who can help you with that. And I do have a resource for somebody who can help with computers. Oh, you do? Is that free of charge as well? He does charge, Okay. but he will do a senior discount for folks who call through Senior Connection. And he's in Santa Maria here? He is in the San Luis Obispo area, but he is willing to travel. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you never know, and if I don't have a resource for it, I will hunt for it. That's, That's awesome. the other piece. I will look for it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I noticed you had something for the refrigerator as well. Could you tell us about I, this? Yes. Thank you, for, thank you for pointing out all my extra goodies. This is one of our most popular items, and this is a program of the Area Agency on Aging. We call this a vial of life. Some of you may have seen this or have been wanting to get your hands on it, and I want to reassure you we have a new stock. Our wonderful executive director, Joyce Ellen Lippman, and uh, other members of our advisory committee have worked very hard to get some additional funding for these. These are rather expensive little pieces, but it is a plastic box that has a magnet on the back. It goes right on your refrigerator. First responders are trained to look for emergency information on the fridge, and this will keep it nice and clean and handy. If you open it up, there is a little card inside, and you can have multiple cards for multiple family members. It has all of your emergency contact information, your name, your date of birth, your medications, who your doctor is, what your health conditions are, whether or not you have an advanced directive for health care and where to locate that document. They find this information. If you're having any sort of a struggle whatsoever, you won't have to repeat any of it. It'll be right there. They can take it with them as you're on your way to the hospital. 
So that is the vial of life. And we have these available at the local fire departments. We try to keep them stocked up. Oh. We have them at our office on South Broadway. And if somebody is truly homebound, I will absolutely get it out to them in the mail. Oh, that'd be great. I would think it, it would be good to make a copy of that and put it in your purse. It would be, yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. The more copies, the better. The more copies, the better. When it comes to emergency information and legal planning, I always let people know that if there isn't a copy of it and others don't know where to find it, it's as good as if it doesn't exist. Okay, good, okay. And um, do you think it's very important for the seniors to have a, a will or a trust or is, is that, or do things get real complicated if they don't have this? Things, things can get rather complicated after we've passed away if we don't have things in place, but uh, I, I like to start with the here and now. Okay. And a will is for after you have gone. Right. What is for while you are still here is an advanced directive for health care, which is something everybody over the, 18, every, over the age of 18 should have, which names uh, somebody to make health decisions if there's ever a time when we can't or we don't want to. Okay. We can hand that power over to mm. somebody, and up to two alternates can be named as well. Uh, and also a power of attorney for finance so that somebody can manage paying our bills, uh, access our Social Security if necessary, access our annuities, our pension, if we're ever in the hospital for an extended period of time and the rent or the mortgage needs to get paid or the property taxes, for goodness sake, somebody needs to be able to get in there and manage those things. We have multiple versions of an advanced directive for health care at our office. Oh. We have the California Hospital Association version, which is very simple. And we also have a very popular one called Five Wishes, which I call the social work version. It's very touchy-feely. It asks even if you want music played when you're feeling sick, if you like cool cloths on your head, things along those lines, oh. as well as the basic legal jargon of who is going to make decisions for you mm -hmm. when you need them made. Mm -hmm. So we can get people linked up with all those legal documents if they need, in addition to a California statutory will form that we have, if somebody would like to do a will on their own. Oh. If they'd like help with it, we have a list of elder law attorneys. And what about if they want to have a trust? The elder law attorneys is where I would point them, or to a paralegal service if they really were keeping an eye on their funds but they wanted to have a trust in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, we're just about out of time. Is there anything else you wanted to mention before we finish up here? Uh, we want to make sure people know that we have got uh, resources available at uh, all times. They are on our website, which is centralcoastseniors.org. So if you're up in the middle of the night, you can search the web. Oh. You can call us Monday through Friday from 8 until 5, 805. 928-2552 and we will be happy to answer your questions. If we don't pick up the phone it's because we're a real live person and we're <laughs> on the line with somebody else but we will absolutely get back to you. Oh boy, this is I'm sure this show is a relief for a lot of people knowing this is all out there for them. I, I hope that it is and I hope that we get some older adults, family members and caregivers that know that they're not alone. Yeah, and I'm sure you can talk with a therapist, too, about so many different things that the elderly have. I remember when I, I wasn't educated with people with Alzheimer's, they would one day talk to me, and the next day they wouldn't. And I thought, what did I do to them? They're not speaking to me. And then I, I got myself educated learning more about Alzheimer's and the personalities of people with Alzheimer's. So it, the more you know, the better off you are. The more you know, the better off you are. And, and knowing that you're not alone and there's a place to call for some good ideas is a really, really nice feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you being on the show today. What a delight I, to come here. Thank you for inviting us, Leslie. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yay! All right. Well, thank you for staying tuned to The Leslie Show today. And as always, don't let anyone take your mojo. Have a great day. Bye-bye.